How many of you uh, can recall the band instruments we've been talking about these last few weeks? Can you somebody name them? No. I haven't. Well, we talked about the fiddle, the dobro, mandolin, stand-up bass. Yep. Tonight we're going to talk about the banjo. Now, the banjo story begins in West Africa, where similar stringed instruments have been played for hundreds of years there. These instruments were known as ekontine or ekontine, and they have a long neck, a body that was made out of a hollowed out gourd. Vicki would be happy with that because she loves gourds, and covered with animal skins, and maybe two or three, well, a few strings. Uh, three or four gutter fiber strings. The design and sound of those instruments change over time, of course, in today, today's banjo. The first gourd banjos in the Americas were used in the Caribbean in the 17th century, with the Jamaican banjo, possibly the origin of the word banjo. Thomas Jefferson, who lived in the Blue Ridge Mountains up in near Waynesboro, Virginia, mentions one of his slaves playing a banjar. So, Already that term was being used. Until the 19th century, the banjo was only played by the African people. Joel Walker Sweeney and his band, the Blackface Virginia Minstrels, you remember Minstrels, introduced the banjo to a larger white audience. Sweeney had picked up playing banjo from slaves on his father's farm. And Sweeney teamed up with William Boucher Jr. to produce the first commercially manufactured banjos using steam bit bent wooden heads in 1845. Metal strings replaced those gut strings and minstrel player Tom Briggs published the first book on how to play banjo, adding some up picking guitar techniques to the uh, down picking uh, of the uh, African downstroke technique. Frets were added during this time as well and the five string banjo was patented in 1849. Soon white people were playing the old European songs, folk songs, and fiddle classics on the banjo, plucking individual strings and playing the banjo's foundation and, and establishing the foundation for the banjo in traditional Appalachian music, bluegrass and old country. Bluegrass legend Bill Monroe wasn't a big fan of the banjo, though he had one in his 1936 band, 30s band. He was planning to get rid of the banjo entirely until he met a man who would become the most famous banjo player in history. And who was that? Hey, you guys are good, Earl Scruggs. Earl Scruggs changed how the, bland, how the banjos played, popularizing the energetic three-finger Scruggs-style picking that we now identify as the banjo sound. Raymond Fairchild, raised in Asheville, advanced the Scruggs style with incredibly fast finger picking. Pete Seeger, leader of the 1950s folk revival, any of y'all that old? Remember the 50s? <laughs> he wrote, what songs do you remember from Pete Seeger? Well, If I Had a Hammer, and This Land is Your Land. And that took the banjo into pop music of the time. Steve Martin. Steve Martin is what? An actor? A comedian? And a banjo player. Yes, yes indeed. He's an amazing banjo player. His albums have earned five Grammy Awards. He has played with Earl Scruggs and performed at the Grand Ole Opry. The most famous banjo song of all time is what? Dueling banjos. Dueling banjos. You guys are good. Why don't you come up and tell the story? <laughs> Dueling banjos, of course. And that was popularized in what movie? Deliverance, Deliverance 1972. Originally called Feuding Banjos, the song featured a four-string banjo played by Arthur uh, guitar Boogie Smith, and a five-string banjo played by Don Reno. The second most famous banjo song probably is The, the Ballad of Jed Clampett. <laughs> <laughs> Became the theme song for the what? Beverly. Beverly Hillbillies. Thanks for all this help. It was performed by Lester Flatt on gu gu guitar and vocals and Earl Scruggs on the banjo. Another of Scruggs' most famous uh, tunes is Foggy Mountain Breakdown. It was used in the movie, what? Bonnie and Clyde. Great. And is considered one of the most difficult banjo songs to play. 
Scruggs with Steve Martin, also on the banjo, won a Grammy in 2001 for a revised version of that. The Osmond Brothers recorded Rocky Top, right, 1967. It is now one of Tennessee's state songs, a classic banjo song that's been covered many, many times. Which brings a banjo story right back here to Tennessee. 